No. Joel Dundigan reporting there. To discuss these issues, I'm joined by the Communities and Local Government Minister, Phil Woolis, the Labour MP for Oldham East and Saddleworth, joined by Dr. Amar Ahmed, who's on the Conservative A-list of prospective parliamentary candidates, and businesswoman Nigat Awan, the chief executive of the Shere Khan restaurant chain. Thank you for joining me, the three of you. First of all, are we getting our knickers unnecessarily in a twist over this, Phil? Because people have been living amongst their own people I mean, in the, here in the well, city of Manchester, the Orthodox Jewish people live in one area, Afro-Caribbean people live in one area. Just because it's Muslim, is it something to be worried about? Congratulations on the report, first of all. It's very important that we debate uh, this. It's only a problem, as the Cantal report identified, if those parallel communities are, are in conflict. If they're not in conflict, if they're rubbing along together in harmony, then there isn't a problem. But if they're in conflict, there's a very big problem and if people are denied opportunities to move on in life. I think that's the underlying issue that we need to dig out. Briefly, Phil, in a democracy, can you enforce segregation? You can't coerce segregation or, or integration. You can ensure there is interaction between peoples. You can give the opportunities. You can create new housing tenancies. You can create new school buildings and so on. But you have to have a situation where there are opportunities for all. All boats must rise with the tide. But you can't force people to integrate, no. Dr Ahmed, is there anything that the Tories would do differently about this question? I think we have to encourage social mixing. And I think that the, the housing issue isn't as important as the schooling issue. If we nurture a sense of common values, of a common sense of belongings, belonging in the schools, I think we'll get more social mixing at a later stage in life and there'll be more understanding between the we communities. We're seeing more and more faith schools in places like Blackburn encouraged by Jack Straw. Yeah, I, I think faith schools are, are a bit of a red thing. We've got shining examples of faith schools. We've got the North Jewish, uh, North Cheshire Jewish Primary School, you know, shining examples of that. So I don't think we should start an attack on faith schools, but we do need to have a social exchange between schools because some of the schools in these areas, there's an ethnic mix of 100% Muslim, 100% white, and those children don't get to see anything of each other's communities. Sure. So we have to have school exchange programs. David Cameron's also set up a pilot scheme in Warrington whereby teenagers of school leaving years, uh, they are able to go into different communities and see the realities of life and coming from different backgrounds. Okay, I mean, Nigat, you live a very integrated life in, in... Does living in segregated groups stop that, that growth of wealth, stop that, that growth that of opportunity? Word, that word segregation, I don't like that word because I'm a great believer in integration. So if we're using the word segregation, which I'm, it's great to have this program because we can voice our opinion, it's very, very important now. At least we're seeing that w there's a noticeable area that's being segregated. So we're addressing the point by sitting here today to say, hold on a minute, we're actually in an integrated society and we should be using education and community okay, centres. Well, you mentioned education, Phil. The thing that interested me most from Professor Cantle, who appears on Monday night on a very fascinating programme with Jack Straw that we've already pre-recorded, was he wants integrated schools but knows he can't get them yet. So he sees well, separated schools yeah. but with, in, with in interaction as a halfway Well, house. there is a huge amount of interaction going on to address the point that Ahmed made of schools that are in separate areas mixing during the day uh, with a systematic program. Is there any but halfway... housing policy, yes. just to come back on the point that was made, of course, you can't bus children to schools in other areas. We've learnt the lesson of that we in have. other parts of the world. Housing policy can influence this, but most of all, our policy is to give everybody good opportunities. Every school should be a good school. Every housing tenancy should be a good tenancy, and in that way we will get the mixed communities. But this will take a generation, I think, Anthony, yeah. to, to okay, get Okay, right. I'm wondering, is there, like the school idea, is there a halfway house in housing? There is, a, there is um, of course, mixed tenancies uh, are part of government policy in, in some areas. But again, you can't coerce people uh, to move areas. You can give them opportunities. Different types of housing. We've had this problem not just between the ethnic communities and the indigenous community, but we've had this problem with the 1960s overspill estates, yeah, yeah. which created yeah. segregated communities. Yeah. We need to get more mixed tenancies, and that's what you're seeing. And the cosmopolitan parts of Greater Manchester and Merseyside show the way forward to others in that respect. Okay, yeah. Briefly, briefly, uh, a last word here on for Dr. Armand. Yeah. 
Uh, well, I, you know, I, I think really we need to concentrate on the schools. You can't legislate for love between communities, and we've got to bring the two communities together, and we've got to tackle issues on both sides. It can't as just be one side. There are real issues within Muslim communities that need sorting out as well. As I think I said to you last week, I'm very disappointed in a Tory uh, prospective <laughs> parliamentary candidate quoting education, 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 oh, which apparently... It was, uh, it was us anyway. He stole it from us. Oh, <laughs> Communication. Well, I, thank you all I three. I liked you till then. Thank you, all, thank you all three. to stay with us, please, and join us for this next debate, because now we're going to talk about one of the most underrepresented groups in politics. They make up more than half of their community, but just a handful are councillors and politicians here in the North West, and none of them are members of Parliament. We're talking about Asian women, but that is slowly changing, often in the teeth of prejudice. Our political editor, David Woodthorpe, has been finding out all about it, if they're to be heard. Dr. Ahmed, are there still these kind of prejudices within the Muslim community that are holding back progress? There are, but we've got to, first of all, make sure that we understand that these are the minority. And there are these northern Mil Miltan areas where uh, quite a lot of uh, the leaders are unelected, um, are unrepresentative, completely disengaged with the, with the youth. And unfortunately, they've been kind of um, encouraged by Labour to deliver votes in those certain areas. And what we've got to do is try to get more representative leaders uh, there so that we don't have this chauvinistic, unfortunately, and sometimes quite racist uh, le leadership, uh, which I mean, is holding back people I mean, from different castes. I mean, that, that all comes into it, caste, sex, religion, all of those. But it's, it's not as if we're, we're so far on. I mean, it was when 30 years ago, was it, Thatcher became the, the head of the Tory party. Everyone said, disaster, no one will vote for a woman. But it, it used to be the case in this country that a, a male candidate was electorally more likely to get elected. It's now, I would argue, the other way around. Uh, I think there are communities in the northwest where that is not the case yet. But this is the underlying subject that is going to be, see the biggest change in my view. Why do you think this is so important? Security. I know you do think it's important. The, the idea of giving young Muslim women, and especially the young women, the microphone, giving them a platform, giving role models in public life uh, and political representation is hugely important across the uh, world. In my view, it's that which will change uh, the nature of uh, politics will grow community cohesion and will give equal opportunities. And I think all political parties um, have a responsibility to address this issue. Nigat, I, 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 I know you've been looking at this beyond these shores. How are things changing in, in the Islamic world itself? Well, I mean, just this morning on the news on Al Jazeera, um, the first woman MP in Bahrain has been elected. So, I mean, should I say any more yeah. at the end of the day? We've always had this problem. If you, even in today, in, in, in the world of law in London, men don't allow women in. It, it, and they find it hard for women to get up the jobs that they want to get. So, it's everywhere. It's not about Asian, Islamic, Jewish, Christian, English. It doesn't matter. It's a person. And I think we've always found this problem with women anyway, generally. And I think in the last five years, there's been an immense change. But I mean, we, we are addressing that in our party. Our vice chairman is Saeed Avasi, a Muslim female, uh, you know, from the north. And we've got, but you're we've got the A-list as well. But you're addressing what you say is, is strange behaviour on the part of the Labour Party yeah. who, who do use well, the wrong people. Uh, well, unfortunately, I, uh, it's my personal opinion and, and lots of other people who have had the experience well, that you've had these feudal leaderships that Labour MPs go to to get votes. They know well, that they deliver the votes and it suits Labour very well to, for the uh, status quo. Don't I mean, make the mistake of I'm making a party political point I'm not, about but well, you've failed um, these communities. Well, that is a... Well, I, I'm sorry, in these areas, that's where Labour fails the most. These places feel Labour's failings disproportionately more than any other place. Well, Crime, unemployment, failing schools, that's why we've this, got this problem this now. This is a serious discussion. It's it not a party a political broadcast. But if you want to get into Dr. the failings of the Conservative Party for Britain's Muslim population, you've been in power for I am nine more years. than happy to go there. You've, I mean, been, you've been there for nine years. Stop Gen interrupting gentlemen, me. Gen the the improvements in gentlemen. the lifestyles and the quality of life and education and the economy in those areas is <laughs> uncomparable to the Conservative years. It is a responsibility, however, of all political parties to address this issue. And I'm quite happy to defend the Labour Party's yeah. record well, as against the issue. Well, it's I, about I, women today. It's, oh, it's about a discussion women. about women. I, the last word goes to you, Nick, because I don't want this to be a party political no. debate. <laughs> Very quickly, are women becoming empowered in your community, briefly? Definitely. Definitely. I say stand in there, keep going, look towards the light, and you'll get there. And the one thing that these two gentlemen from the Labour Party, Tory Party, agree, it is vital. Yeah. Thank you all very, Thank very you. much. Okay. OK, this week, by the way, saw the general election on the Isle of Man.